Our next speaker is an educator. Bobby McDonald is the executive director and founder of the City Neighbors Foundation. They have three incredible um, schools here in the city. They are a project-based learning schools that art integration and um, parent involvement are foundations of the work that they do. Would you welcome Bobby McDonald? Thank you. Um, I missed a great opportunity when I was young. Every summer I played softball, and for your information, I played left field and third base because I had a pretty good arm. All right. <laughs> and um, right near the end of the school year, the head of the park district, and I lived in a small town um, south of Chicago, the head of the park district came up to me and said, hey, Bobby, um, you know, people knew I was a singer because I sang everywhere I went, night, night till uh, every day. Um, we'd like you to sing the Star Spangled Banner at opening day this year. And I said, cool, all right, you know, and I rode away on my cool bike, and I didn't mention it to my mom, and I certainly didn't write it down on a calendar. Um, but then opening day came, and I actually did, did realize it was opening day. And I thought of that, wasn't I supposed to do something, something about singing? And nothing came to mind, really, and I thought, well, they'll be fine without me. I'm sure they'll sing the song without me. No big deal. And I kept doing whatever it was I was involved in and didn't actually go to opening day that year. And then a few days later at my first softball game, I rode to the field on my bike and I got off. And everywhere I went, people said, where were you? We needed you. We wanted to sing the Star Spangled Banner and you were nowhere to be found. You know, we called out to you with the mic. Is Bobby here? And I was so surprised and ashamed. And I also thought, oh, God, when my ma hears this. <laughs> But I've always regretted that, and I thought they would carry on without me, and I guess they didn't. And so when my phone rang back in 2003, and a friend said, hey, Bobby, someone just passed the charter school law. Marilyn just passed it. Why don't you open a school? You've been searching for a school for your daughter, Sadie, and your two children. This could be it. You could do it. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm a very busy woman. I'm working on a quilt. Not even done with it yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have three young children under the age of six, so that means I'm at some level certifiably insane. And, um, you know, I just, why don't you research that idea, a public charter school? I'm not even sure, you know, and I pushed my good friend off the phone. And that night, my husband Rob and I put our kids in bed, and I sang for the millionth time Thunder Road to my son Ramsey, who insists on the full version every night. Um, <laughs> And I stayed up late, and I did finish that quilt. And when I woke up in the morning, I thought, yes, this is it. This is my chance. This time, it is going to matter who I am. Because back then, I didn't think it mattered who I was. I didn't think it mattered that I didn't show up. But this time, I can have it so that my voice is heard. This time, because I have strong feelings about what makes a great school, I could get together with the parents and teachers and children of Baltimore City and come up with some way to make the best school we could imagine. And so we started with this question, if you could have the best school you could imagine, what would it be? And the beauty of it is, is that you actually make answering this question the work of the school. And to do that, you need to be listening to children, you need to be listening to parents, and the teachers have to be generating curriculum. And the parents have to be generating everything that it takes to run a fabulous school. And I do want to say the good news, which is that we actually have everything we need right here. So this is one of my favorite pictures, because um, Jacques and Kai are simply out on the playground at recess at City Neighbors Charter School, our first op school that we opened in 2005. These boys have grabbed a book. They're outside reading. Um, Jacques, the younger one, is showing something to Kai. There's no coercion going on here for learning. This is just a joyful moment for them in a very relaxed way, isn't it? I, I want to help you, um, whatever you picture with public education in Baltimore City, I just want you to relax about that and let it expand to all the possibilities. So these boys are out there playing on the playground and um, looking at this book. So at the heart of our school, we had to have a vision of the student as capable and complex 
and worthy of study. And no matter if that child came to us in kindergarten having been read to for 4,000 hours or 40, they still have that deep human need to be understood, to be loved, and to express themselves with the greatest of joy and creativity. So how do you involve students in, in this kind of learning? You have to let them know that you actually value their thinking. So I, of course I want to douse you with these amazing projects, long-term inquiries that we do. But if I could, and I'll try, um, I'm just going to show you a moment in a math lesson, the most simplest math lesson. How many ways can you represent a number? And in this lesson, um, we're going to be stepping into Allison Mercier's second grade classroom at City Neighbors. There's a lot of internal background organization to allow a classroom to work in the way this classroom is going to work. But you'll see the children are grouped around the room. They all apparently know exactly what they're doing. Um, Miss Mercier loves music, so she's got some cool funky music going on. I want you to notice the children's thinking, and I also just want you to know how, how the feeling of this classroom is. The relaxed, the independence. And so here it is, Allison Mercier's second grade classroom. Oh, So that kind of um, valuing the students' work and that kind of teaching, how do you empower students and how do you empower um, teachers to be in a collaborative effort with children to develop a curriculum? And I do want to mention that that includes an assessment. You cannot teach this way without being deeply rooted in assessment. And your best partners for that are students as well. What are we going to measure? Why are we going to measure it? How do we know we are learning? Um, so I just want to show you a quick minute. Um, so our, our waiting list for that first school got up so high that we decided to open two more schools. We opened City Neighbors Hamilton last year, which will be another K-8. to And this year we opened City Neighbors High School with 99th graders from across the city, 23 different middle schools all coming together for City Neighbors High School. And we're very excited about that. But again, we had to establish that strong culture. And for the high school kids, it was a little bit tough, right? Because they had been in other schools with other messages for so many years. But they're getting it. And I just want to show you um, just a minute where they're making a decision with a teacher. In this clip, the teacher is um, Tiffany Sikorsky. She's our science teacher. She's the one in the sweatshirt. And in high school, it's harder to tell the teachers and kids apart. <laughs> And she um, is presenting to them a decision about what their next project will be. Will they do it all together? Will they do separate ones? And the students um, share their thoughts on that as well. And at one point, um, one of our students, LeVar, says, you know, it could be you make pancakes, I make waffles. And it's kind of hard to hear, so I'm just letting you know. Here's okay, so one time. option is when we do our projects next quarter, you guys all do the same thing, but your own style. Yeah. Or we can do it the same way we did it this quarter, which is you all can do basically whatever project you want to do, as long as I know what you're doing. Do you guys have a preference about that? Yeah. What, Lexi? Why? Yes. I don't like the first one. 
you know, like having to do what everybody's doing. I can say the benefit to everybody doing the same thing is it's easier for me to get supplies and it's easier for me to keep track of what you're doing. But if you, but if you get different things, mm -hmm. it's more like different. I'm like, I make waffles, you make pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's more like diversity in our projects if we can do whatever we want. Okay, Jamil, you had an opinion. What do you think? Um, I think we should do the second one where we do our own so that we can learn from each other. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's I ain't, you know, know all about that sandwich stuff. But yeah, I do. Right. Thanks, Jack. And we are going to do Sierra's... Um... All right. <laughs> Those high school kids getting to work, right? And you heard the last um, student saying, I think we should each do our own so we can learn more about each other. So giving the um, students a say in how we do it and what we do it, really empowering them. Now, you know, many of us went to schools where the, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the school environment as well that creates this powerful feeling of a school all working together to generate itself. So um, this classroom might look familiar to you, right? It's when the teacher held all the information and the students lined up to receive that information. But now information is everywhere. People have access. Um, the hallways, they were simply pass-throughs. Um, it's the industrial model. It's a shotgun hallway with cells off of it. Um, <laughs> that sounds, the cafeteria was designed to feed a lot of people in a short amount of time, be cleaned easily. So the facility has a purpose and it was based on an industrial model of education. But if the education that I'm presenting to you, one where every single person actually does matter, where it matters if you show up, where it matters if your voice is heard, if that's what we're after, does this actually work? Um, when we went to open the high school, we decided to get more specific with our question. And we used this question, and I had the help of um, our principal of our first school, Mike Chalupa, to come up with this. What would it take to make sure that every student is known and loved and supported academically? And so we went about answering that question and making that the work of the school to answer that question. Um, so this is a pod. This is a place in the high school where 15 students and an advisor meet for an hour and a half every single day. So in this space, rather than um, lockers in the hallways, each child has a student desk, as you can see. There's a living room area. There's kind of a cool little cafe area. And in this time that they spend there together, they're doing projects. They're getting tutoring. They're doing individualized learning plans. They're being known to each other. They're creating a family within the school. Um, and then the actual environment is designed to support that. It's designed to actually um, recreate the relationship of the teacher and the students. This is a teacher and student sitting at that desk. They're both doing their work. So the pods are one of the essential ways we say, let's change up the physical environment to redefine these relationships and redefine how you spend your time at school. Um, the, what the children think, their own inspiration, all of that is important to us, and we're trying to create a way to create environments that allow people to do their best work starting with the student, the vision of the student as powerful and capable in the middle of all of that. There's a comfort, isn't there? There's a, a relaxed feeling. This is Baltimore City public education. This is what it looks like, and it's lovely. <laughs> you know, I know these guys. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, I, I don't have time in this to really talk about the, the role that parents have, but I want you to know it's essential and it's um, fabulous, the gathering and collaboration of parents to help create this with our teachers and students. One of the things that we do to support that is create gathering spaces. So this is actually the lobby of the high school. Um, creating places and times for people to get together and create our school together is important to us. This used to be a brick wall. Now it's a stage. We can have movies in the park. One nice thing is the neighbor who lives right next to the school replaced his fence. You know, and I went over to introduce myself to him, and he said, well, if you guys are replacing the windows and putting up that stage, I'm going to replace my fence. And I thought, you know, there's a conversation going on with the school and the community that's very nice. So I said, come on over to the movie in the park next weekend and <laughs> join in the fun, right? So the um, cafeteria was actually designed by the students. So we took them through a process and said, if you could have the best 
cafe that you can imagine, what would it be? And they came up with needing a stage, booths, a cool leather couch area. I, I can feel that some of you are thinking about money right now. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I just want you to know a lot of everything you see is from hotel liquidators and office liquidators. That's why we have this cool Marriott uh, feel going on, <laughs> right? <laughs> If you can get a couch for 10 bucks, you can get six or 10 of them, right? So we do fabulous um, bargain shopping to get commercial grade furniture that's really beautiful, but, um, and it won't fall apart right away. It's all out there. We can all share and recycle and connect with others, and that's what we do. Um, the hallways are, are really important to us. So one thing we did is we made it so that student work can be easily displayed. I love this photo because one of the students took it. I just thought it was interesting the student's perspective of the art hanging in the hallways. Our idea is not just to show the finished pro product, but actually the process of people's thinking, you know, to show how they got to where they're going. And that's something that we work on all the time. We call it documentation. We put a lot of glass between the classrooms and the hallways so that this teacher can do passive supervision. She can be working with a group out here. There can be kids out in the hallway. The built-in bench, which was designed by the wonderful Aisha Isaacson, who's here in the audience tonight, is gorgeous, and at first I wanted some kind of curve in the hallway, like in the tile, and she said, babe, you can't afford it. Um, but she did put a curve for me in the bench, <laughs> and the idea is to intentionally soften the hallways, to soften what we might say to each other and how we might say it. All of this is us trying to create our school. Here's LeVar. I mean, just look at him, right? I feel like you might be able to get to know LeVar a little bit from looking at him right here. He's important to our school. This is the principal of our school, Danique Dali, with his students. They are creating City Neighbors Together. And the wonderful thing is this can be so at any school. It's just an orientation. It's a mindset saying that if we all creatively put our imaginations to work, we can design the best school we can imagine together. Here's our students coming in, right? We want them. We want the kids. They can feel that. They know that, no matter what middle school they went to and no matter what their circumstances are at home. So here's who we are. This is Baltimore City. Um, this is from our mosaic of our logo. This is our, our beautiful diversity that we have. It's powerful. We have rich people. We have poor people. We have everything in between. It's Baltimore. And this is our life, our life in school, our life together here in the city. How much can we care about each other and take care of each other and imagine for each other? And of course, my favorite part is the path. How do you get there? How, how much care can we give and how much can we know each other on our way to that beautiful place that we're all going? So this is our logo. It's City Neighbors Charter School. And I want, if you would, if you could, imagine with me the best public school system that you possibly can, then I think that we can have it here in Baltimore City. Thank you.